I am an elder dad. Wait, I'm a new elder. This year. So now I'm nervous. Um, the random mics are up here, you can't hit my knees, not me like that. <laughs> um, but I got a message for you. It's called It's My Nature. I'm gonna tell you a story. Anybody, has anybody ever heard the story of the scorpion and frog? Yeah. I heard that story. So the scorpion, he was looking across this river and he came up on the bank and he saw this frog there. So the scorpion knows that he can't swim. So he said, he looks at the frog and said, hey, will you take me over? And the frog, knowing the, what the scorpion does, he said, no, you're going to sting me. So the scorpion says, no, I'm not going to sting you. If, we, if I do that, we'll both die out there. So he, he talked to him a little more, and he finally got him to agree to take him over. So the frog, he hops on the frog back, and the frog swim, he swim, he swim. And bam, he feels a sharp pain in his back. He looks up at the scorpion and said, what did you do? And the scorpion said, I'm sorry. I stung you. And he said, don't, the frog said, don't do that. If you do that, we're going to drown. So he keeps swimming, he's swimming, he's swimming. Bam, bam. The scorpion stings him two more times. And the frog says, what are you doing? If you keep stinging me, we're going to die. So as he keeps swimming, he's swimming, that, that, that toxin, it starts to take effect. And he starts to sink. And the frog looks up at the scorpion and he says, now we're both going to die. And as they're going down, they're going down. And the scorpion says, I'm sorry. It's just who I am. So the title says, it's in my nature. It's just who I am. I have heard many times that we interact with people, you might hear from time to time, that's just who I am. In the workplace, you might have this one person who constantly just has an attitude. No matter what's going on, they can get a bonus and job, they'll complain and say, this is not enough. Or you have another person who constantly is happy. You can't get them down. And when you ask somebody about them, they will say, that's just who they are. That's their nature. So I want to explain to you today that we have a nature. And we're going to read, we're going to turn our Bibles to Mark 5, and we're going to read verse 1 to 9. Mark 5, verse 1 to 9. Say amen when you have fun. So before we read Mark 5, a few verses before, in um, chapter 4, Jesus is on a ship with his disciples, and the great storm has came, and is shaking the boat. Now Jesus is sleeping in the bottom of the boat, and they wake God, Jesus, and they say, Master, don't you care that we perish? And you know, we do that sometimes. We go through the storm, and we ask God, don't you care that we perish? If they knew who they were asking. Jesus came to save them, and they asked him, do you care if we not perish? So that's what we do sometimes. We know God loves us, but we still ask. Because we all go through problems in our lives, don't we? I have plenty of problems, just for myself. And I, sometimes I do ask God, it's like, God, where are you? Things are wrong right now. Please help me. It doesn't seem that you are here. But God is always there with us. We need not fear because Jesus is in the boat with us. And Jesus says, peace, be still. And the, and, the, and the sea calms and the wind calms. Everything is calm. And it says in verse 41, it says, in chapter 4, verse 41, it says, And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? Amen. These disciples were exceedingly fearful. Because they have never witnessed this before. So we're going to jump into chapter 5. Let's read verse 1 through 9 together. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, and unto the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was when he was come out of the ship, immediately met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit, 
who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken into pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High? I, I join thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. So we see that this man that's being possessed, he's in the tombs. He's living in the tombs right now. And remember what I said, the disciples, they were exceedingly fearful even before this happened. So imagine coming up on shore, and the, and the Bible says that night and day, he howls. So he's out there, he's screaming. He, he's running around with these chains, clanking, and making noise. So as soon as the disciples come onto the shore, they see this man running out the tombs towards them, and they're already afraid. And he's howling, and he hear those, those chains banging. Now, I don't know about me, disciple. If that was me, I would have been running on water that day. I probably would have knocked over John or, or Peter to get out the way. Amen. But Jesus, you know, he, he's never afraid. Only the, devil, only the devil and the angels, they fear him. The devil and the evil angels, they fear him. And they said, Jesus, don't torment us. So this, this man, he was out of his mind, as we will call it today. If we see somebody out in the streets howling and acting a fool, as they call it, we would say, something wrong with this man. He is crazy. And look at where he lives at. He lives amongst the, amongst the dead. Now, of course, the dead are not alive, but he, 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 he stays there. I don't know if he was put there, because they said they chained him, or that's what's where he decided to live. So you can imagine when visitors would come by and they hear this howling, and they'd be like, what's that? Or oh, that's just... Give him. Him. That is John. He's up there. And they say, what's wrong with him? We don't know. That's just who he is. Now, before we look down on this man, let us not forget the nature that we were born with. In, in Psalm 5, 51, 5, it says, Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Romans 5, 12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So we all have sinned, so we can't look down on this man. Amen. Just because somebody had a different sin from you, don't make you better. You know, I, I see a lot of people go around, you know, we're talking about it today, you know, I don't smoke. And we, and we build ourselves up. I don't smoke, I don't drink. And that's a wrong impression to give. Because a lot of people in the world, they say, I don't go to church to go be with these uppity people. And, and, and that deters people away from God. And as we see that with, um, with Jesus, he would sit and eat with the sinners. He didn't partake with the sinners, but he sat and ate with them. We can't save people if we stay here in the church. Now, people in the church need saved. This is where they should be. But we have to go where they are at. Now, I'm not saying go, go to somewhere that you can't handle. If you're a drunkard, don't go in the bar and try to save nobody. Because <laughs> you might even feel tempted to get a drink. Has anybody ever drunk before? Alcohol? You oh, love drunk before. Um, it, it's very tempting. Even now, to this day, you would meet me in hell. I go to a restaurant and they have a little drinks on the side. You know, little, they have colorful drinks, you know, just to, something to attract your eyes. And now I'm like, mm, I'm on the train. But now I can't do that because I know that's not right. That's not what the Lord wants me to do. The sin is not in the temptation, it's in the act. Amen? Amen. Let's see here. So we all have this fallen nature. In Galatians 5 17, it says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit flesh and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other 
so that we cannot do the things that we do, that we would. So even though I took that plunge of faith into the baptismal pool, I laid down that old man. Is he gone? No, he's not gone. He's just laying dormant, just waiting to rise up. You know, but when he rises up, we got to put him back down. We got to grab that old man, put him underneath the waters till the bubble stop. You know, we have to, we have to sacrifice. We are a daily sacrifice that we have to do. It says, resist the devil and he shall flee. Now, it said he shall flee. Did it say he won't come back? Now, he's going to come back whenever he sees a chance. See, the devil, he knows our weaknesses. He knows me. So he knows what, what, what gets me aroused. So money, I don't really care about money. So he can't tempt me with that. You know, even though we try to, I guess, hide certain things that we do or, or say, but the devil, he doesn't only look at your words, he look at your actions. So those of us who are inclined to indulge in a, in a fleshly lust, if you see a man, and your weakness is a woman. You see a woman pass by. You don't say nothing. But what, what's following that woman? Your eyes. And the devil sees that. I got it. I know what his weakness is. So the devil will come with you for your weakness. Your weakness might not be my weakness. So the devil has his plans for us. And he waits for the right moment. I always tell my youth, the devil will wait 20 years to get you. He said, I ain't going to get you now, but in 20 years, I'm going to get you. So you see that we all have inherited these sinful natures from Adam. This nature to do what we want to do. The, the nature opposite of God's will for us. The Bible calls this nature the carnal mind. Romans 8, 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. But we have this nature that we inherit from Adam. Adam didn't have his nature until he disobeyed God. So it's kind of passed down. It's passed down. I said the sin is not in the nature, it's in the act. So even though Eve was tempted by Satan, and she looked at the fruit and said, um, the fruit looks like it's good, good to eat. That's not the sin. But when she touched it, that's when she disobeyed God. What is sin geared towards? It's geared towards self. Now I have a little daughter, her name is you know, Annie, she's three years old. Who has kids here? Not everybody has kids here. And we all used to be kids, so we, you know. As I was a kid, you know, my mom would always, you know, I would get beaten because I would do something else, you know. And, you know, I, I, I would get some good beatings, you know, that old school beating, you know. You know, right now I don't beat my kids. That's the last resort when they're just not listening. I'll give them a, little, you know, a spank or something like that. But you know, back in our days, if you even look wrong, whack. You know, she only got to look at you, just boom. Well, you know, we, we know better. We got that eye. She gives that eye like, you know, don't play with me, eye. Let me sit there and be quiet. But I ain't always listening up. I always got beaten. You know, I deserve them, I would say. And with my daughter, she's at a young age. Just because she has this nature in her, even though as innocent as she is, she has this nature that gears towards self. And as we all have our kids, they will say, minds, that's minds. Even if it's not theirs, that's minds. I was sitting was there eating my food, she finna eat her food, she come stand in front of me and say, minds. Oh, it's my food, you eat your food already. I gotta eat, you know, I'm a little skinny, but you know, I eat a lot, you know, I need it. And I have to teach her, say, no, we share. You know, even with toys, um, she had another sister named Michaela. She don't want to share with her toys. So I take it like, we have to share. This is what God would want us to do. That's to be God in us, to be willing to share. So when our sister, um, what's her name? Um, sister Mary, sister, when I was um, doing the offertory. Just sit back, sorry about that. Um, she asked for an offer for our brother. We shouldn't be selfish and keep it toward ourselves. Because who money is it really? It's God's money. But God says, help thy brothers. You are your brother's keeper. 
So even though he knew what he did, we ought to care. We, 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 are, we ought not to say, oh, that's what they do, or that's what the world do. We ought to care for our fellow brothers. If I see you walking toward the cliff, you know, he's walking towards it, that's his fault. No, come brother, there's a cliff over there. I don't want you to fall, I don't want you to fail. So with this nature, God has to break through this nature, this sinful nature that we have, this carnal mind. God can't save us in this state. What did Jesus tell Nicodemus that he had to do? He had to be born again. He had to put on a new nature, not a sinful nature, but a divine nature to be born again. So we must put that old man down in that watery grave, as he said before. Why am I going on and on about the sinful nature? To show that in the flesh we cannot serve God, nor reflect his image. The carnal mind is empty against God. It doesn't have. This very being is empty against God. Nobody who is in the carnal mind seeks God. God has to put it in them. That's how much he wants to save them. Even though you don't want to be saved, God wants to save you. So he puts it in you to come to him. God is a loving God. <clears throat> So, God has to break that sinful nature with us. But he can't do it forcefully. We have to give it up. In the, in the story of Adam and Eve, when they had put on, they made their own clothes. That's them trying to save themselves. Now, did God come down and rip those clothes off of them? No. They would have to take it off and put on the righteousness of Christ. So, everything is a choice that we do. In John 3... That's why the Bible says in John 6, 6, 3, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The flesh profiteth nothing. There is nothing in the flesh that we can bring to God to say, fix this. God cannot fix sins. And before you throw the stones at me, let me finish it. God cannot fix sin. When Jesus comes back, is he going to fix sin? He has to do completely away with it. That's how much sin is dangerous. It threatens the kingdom of God, as we see with, with um, the devil. He said there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the devil and his angel. That's how much sin is dangerous. So God has to completely get rid of it, because he can't work with that. He can't mow that. He says, right. throw it away. So the flesh profit nothing, but we serve an amazing God. Even though we have a fallen nature, there's nothing in the flesh that we can do. We can serve God. We serve a God that can call him something from nothing. What do I mean by that? We serve a God that can call something from nothing. Have you not read when God said, let there be light? Was there light? What did God use to make that light? He just called it out of existence. When God called the angels out of existence, what did he make? What, what did he use? What material did he use? Nothing. God just called it out of, out of nothing. God just called it out of nothing. So as we see, God, he can... Something out of nothing. So with our flesh, we don't have nothing to bring for him. So it says, surrender all to God. We're giving up everything. And out of nothing, God can bring a divine nature out of him. See, my, when I was growing up, you know, I always was brought to church. I didn't want to go to church. I had no interest in it. But thank God I had a, a, a godly mother that brought me to church even though it wasn't a choice. And I had to sit there and listen. Or else, you know, you know. Nothing to make her, she would clap and praise the Lord, praise the family, and go make the beat, you know? So, I had to sit there and listen. I learned a lot, you know, through a raising facts and such and such. But as I grew, old, as I grew older, you know, I become a teen, you know, become rebellious more, and um, some of the things I used to do, Anybody been to New York? Anybody been to New York? Um, from the Bronx. 
Um, there's a lot of bodegas, it's corner stores. It's like a gas station without the gas, kind of. And I will leave out of church and go to the store and buy my candy, come back here and see and eat my sin candy. Right? <laughs> I would, when my assembly church, I wouldn't go. Sometimes she wouldn't go. She'd like, Jeremy, go to church. I was like, yes, mom, we go. And I would just ride the train all day until, I guess, the time when church is enough, church is over. And it, was just, it just wasn't in me. It wasn't my nature to want to see God. And as I grew up, as I grew older, you know, one day I got robbed in New York. Um, you know, they beat me up and stuff like that. Um, I had a coat, a fly coat. And they tried to beat me up for it, and I would not give it up. And the reason I wouldn't give it up, because I didn't want to be no punk. I was more interested in what my friends thought. I was ready to die for this coat. So they beat me up. You know, I was little back then, so you know, I'm little now. So I was little back then. And so they beat me up, beat me up. I swung back. I hit somebody's shoulder. Somebody went to home with a, short, a sore shoulder that day. You know, they beat me up. So they threw me on the floor and took out their gun. And they pointed it at me. I said, are you ready to die for your coat? Guess what I did? I zipped my coat up. I'm ready to die for this coat. And of course, they beat me up more. They got the coat anyways. But you know, uh, <laughs> it was a waste of a beating. You know, they got the coat anyways. But I was ready to die for this coat. I had a nature of the world, possession. This is, this is mine. You ain't getting that. And. You know, all through my, my younger ages, I, I would just rebel, 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 rebel. I didn't want nothing to do with God. I started drinking. Um, I smoked a little bit. You know, running around here from girl to girl to girl. And I'm not saying that to, to, to boast about what I was doing. I, I regret those things. I actually, you know, all the girls I used to date and cheat on and do wrong by, most of them I contacted and I apologized to them. I said, you know, I was in another... I was in another state of mind back then, you know. Now I'm a changed person, so I can go back and apologize. And I only tell you all these things so that you won't think that I'm sitting upon high, looking down. I'm, I, I have sinned just like everybody here. But I've come out of that sin. You know, um, even though I was gonna, you know, about to die on that street right there. And I, I, still, I still don't learn. I still kept on doing what I wanted to do. You know, sometimes God was send trouble in your life. <coughs> Not always hallelujah in the Bible. You know, uh, Joseph, he went through some trials. Job, he, oh boy, he went through some trials. I hope I can handle it. If that would ever happen to me, I hope I could be able to handle it. Um, that didn't change me. One day I, was, I, I went to Grammy and I was sitting there at a the seminar. I didn't want to go to church. My wife, she was saying, you know, Jeremy, come on, let's go. I said, no, I want to go. And one day I said, let me go. And I came there, and I was sitting on the right side all by myself. And the spirit started working on me and said, Jeremy, that's enough. It's time. And you would think that almost death would change me. But no, just the sweet voice of God changed my life at that moment. And at that moment, I decided to make a change. All right. Now, have I given up all the things I have did at that moment? No. But I made a choice to want to serve God. Even though I didn't give all this, it's a process, a step-by-step -step process that we have to go through. So don't think that because you don't know everything or you're not where you're, at, or you're, not where you're supposed to be at that you can't come to God. And I said, come as you are. Come to me now. Because guess what? Why are you making that decision right now? The devil's like, nah, you don't know everything. Don't go. You're not where you're supposed to be. Don't go. And while he's telling you don't go, he's planning your death tonight. Or today, you wouldn't walk out of the room. He's planning my death. Or oh, you ain't gonna change. I'm gonna make sure of that. I'm gonna make sure your probation is closed. So make the decision to serve God now. If I had died back then, I knew better, but I didn't do better. I would have been lost. What a waste of a soul that we have a God that wants us to be in heaven, to give us 
all the treasures of heaven. Amen. And for me to miss out on what? A coat? You know, it, it, it sounds foolish, but sin is foolish. The carnal mind is foolish. Yes. So God has, um, you know, changed me and, and, and he given me new life. So God has made me new. So when we read in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, things are becoming new. People will not recognize you. Some of my old friends, you know, um, they'll be like, hey, Jeremy, you know, you want to go out and, and do this? No, I, I don't do that anymore. Not to be boastful again, but we're not better than, we're just different. Amen. Amen. You, know, um, you know, I went to one of my friends, he had a little birthday party, whatever. No, I went there. Um, I usually go there with the intent of, of sharing God. I don't go there to party. But he said, hey, Jim, you want to drink? No, I'm good. He said, well, you stop drinking. So, you know, a few, a, a few years back, you know. Um, if, if you look at my Facebook page, that's what look. I have pictures of baggy clothes, 2X shirts, and size 36 pants, you know. <laughs> I was addressing with the culture. That, that's who I was back then. And I wear medium now. <laughs> you, know, you, you imagine I was like a dress on me. You know? And you will see at a certain point a change in my Facebook posting. You know, you know, five years ago, you would see that change. And I saw it because Facebook it reminds you of um, it said, hey, remember five years you made this post? And I saw it, I saw the change in it. You know, as we're in our workplace, I, I, don't, I don't go and say, I, you don't go and say, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. I just let them see it in my actions. Amen. Right. Anybody can say, I'm a Christian. If you ask the world, are you a Christian? Yes. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Have you read the Bible today? No. <laughs> Have you prayed today? No. Have you told anybody about Peter today? No. Do you love Jesus? Yes. <laughs> that don't make any sense, does it? So, in our daily lives, we have to be a witness for God. Not to go out, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but let them just see it in you. God has given us a, 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 a promise. In 2 Peter, verse 1 and 4, it says, Whereby are we given unto us an exceedingly, exceedingly great and precious promise, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the lust in the world through lust. So God has promised a divine nature, a different nature from the sinful nature. Like I said, the sinful nature has no desire of God. But when you're in a divine nature, it's like you just... I, when I was in that sinful nature, and I would hear people always talking about God, like, what's wrong with you? That's all you talk about is God. That's all you talk about is God. See, the world doesn't understand us. And we don't understand the world. Let me make an example out of that. If somebody curses me out, you know, in front of a crowd, the crowd is waiting for you to react. Oh, it's about to be some mess. They're going to yell, world star, or whatever. I don't know if y'all know what that is, but when you hear world star, you just get out the area. So um, they will wait for you to curse back. And when you don't curse back, when you pray for your enemies, it confuses the world. They don't understand that. It's like we don't understand how you're my brother and I can hurt you. How can I kill you? I, I, I don't understand. Like, how can you do that? But that's just in their nature. Now, that's not to put them down, because some people don't know who Jesus is. And it's our job to introduce him. You know, it's kind of like introducing a stranger, setting them up on a blind date. All right. You know, um, and, and we have to be the. I'll explain. We have to be what the world looks to for moral guidance, because the world's going to look to the stars, um, news, or, or different people that are, that are of the world for guidance. They can't do that because the blind can't lead the blind. Can a drunkard help a drunkard? No, they're going to take a sober person to help a drunkard. A heroin addict cannot help a heroin addict unless they're going to join together and they're going to do whatever they do. So we have to be different than the world. 
we have to put on the divine nature of God, his righteousness, so that when things happen and people expect a negative reaction out of us, we don't. We pray for our enemies. When somebody curses me out, brother, you know, I love you, um, let's talk. You know, the, the, the one thing we all ask your kids, he hit me, so I hit him back. Now I tell my daughter, if somebody hits you, now you know, back in the days, mom said, if somebody hits you, you hit them back. That's, that's, what, that's what I was taught back in the days. Not as a sense of being mean, but you don't let nobody beat you up. And that's fine, it's good to defend yourself. But the first reaction when somebody hits you shouldn't be, I'm going to break your neck. You understand? It should be like, you hit me, brother, why did you hit me? I don't want to fight. You step back. So just let them know, like, I don't want to fight. That's not me. Let me talk to you. Let me pray with you. Might not work. Might work. You never know. And I'm not telling you to sit there and get beat up now. And there comes a point where you have to defend yourself. But you don't, you don't fight. Cause you know, you know, some videos online, they're saying they're fighting, 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 and the person is down, and you keep on kicking the person. We don't do that. We just defend and back off. You know, we're not you know, savages. We love our brother. We don't want to hurt you, but I need to stop you. Amen? So, we share in the glory that we take on the character of God. What is the character of God? Can we turn to Exodus 4, 34, verse 6? Exodus 34, verse 6. Say amen when you have fun. Amen. But Exodus 34, 6, it says, And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, Merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquities and transgressions and sins, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children's children, upon the third and unto the fourth generation. So I see here, the, the, the character of God is getting declared. And that's what we have to do. We have to, um, we have to have mercy. We should be gracious. We should be long-suffering and abundant in goodness. So when when the world continues to beat us down, you know, as you see, we're being persecuted. You know, even though we're not physically being persecuted right now, every day we're being persecuted by the devil for our belief. You know, every day the devil is on an attack because he wants you dead and he wants you lost with him. You know, I always say, you know, why did God allow Satan to, to manifest himself to us? And I couldn't understand why Satan, he was in the very presence of God, he was in heaven, and you turned away. Forgive my language, you big dummy. How can you do that? How can you turn away from God and you're in his presence? You're in heaven. Especially with the angels, how they turn away from God. You know, it's one thing, we don't see God. But we have faith that he is true, right? We have faith, we believe in God. But you actually saw God in his presence. High angel. And you made that nature come up inside of you. That pride. And pride is a killer. You know, I'll say it to you guys. If somebody has done you wrong, do you wait for them to come apologize to you? No. That's not the godly nature. But we see in the story of Adam and Eve, Adam has sinned. Did God sin? No. That sin belonged to Adam. And somebody showed me a verse where Adam cried out to God. He never did. He just hid himself. But see, love, it moves first. Love doesn't need permission to express itself. God didn't come down waving a belt, ready to start beating people. He just said, Adam, we're out there. See, God's a reasoning God. He wants to know, why do you do what you did? So, if somebody were to do us wrong, it's our job as a Christian to go to that person and try to reconcile. Because that's what God did with Adam. 
And God is the greatest example of how to live a godly life. Amen. Amen. You know, um, so, so even when we, we just, like, you know, I'm right. I'm right. I'm, that's that pride. I'm not going over there. I didn't do nothing wrong. God said, put that side of, put that pride aside. Humble yourself. And I like that verse. God said, humble yourself. Don't let God have to humble you. But when God humbles you, as we see with um, Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. out there eating the grass and, you know, had a mind of a wild man, he get out there like a beast. God had to humble him. So let us humble ourselves before God has to humble us. Pride is a killer. So, we see the characteristics of God. He is love. God is love. Does God have love? Yes. yes. But He is love. His very nature is love. Everything that God does is out of love. When He destroys, it's out of love. You know how, how hard it is to understand that. When He destroys, it's out of love. When He blesses, it's out of love. Everything that God do is out of love. There's nothing that God does not out of love. Imagine how, if we had a sinful nature in heaven, how miserable, miserable would we be? You know, you have that man who lusts after the woman. We're going to have long robes all the way up to our ankles. Imagine how difficult it would be for him to lust and not be able to fulfill that lust. Out of love, God said, no, nah, I'm not even going to beat you up here. You're going to be miserable. See, heaven is not a place for miserable people. Are we sad adventures? No, we're adventures. We are looking forward to the, to the day of Christ. It is called the great and dreadful day of Christ. It's going to be great for some and dreadful for others. And I pray that, you know, all of us here, that will be a great day for us. So if we jump back into Mark 5.14, can we jump back here? Mark 5, verse 14. Say amen when you have found it. Sit before 
I was 13, I never cursed. Never cursed. But when I started listening to a certain kind of music, music started coming out. It was my nature to curse. It was just so easy. You know, like a roll of a tongue. Like eloquent. Thing. And that was my nature. So when we bring these things in, that is not what God can sit and listen to us. Now, who wants the devil with them? Nobody. I don't want the devil next to me. But if I choose to indulge in the devil's entertainment, he has every right to be right next to me. Because that's his music. That's his entertainment. God can't dwell in a, in a, in a, in a place of, of pure sin. That's why he, he got to back off. But the devil, he'll be there. That's why God said, come, you come to me. Come. I'll meet you halfway. If you, you walk, I'll run. You know what I'm saying? God is not one that will stay away, but he can't dwell in sin. That's why Satan had to be kicked out of heaven. Because he was cor corrupting the very aura or, or nature of the, the heavenly bodies there. He had to go. Because if you let sin manifest itself, it, it, it will germinate and, and become cancer and, and kill you. And those angels who the devil sought to deceive, he put the doubt in their mind that God is not fair. You know, he might say, oh, we don't need a law. We good. What do we need a law for? God has given Adam freedom. He said, out of every tree, you shall eat. But for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Eat of it. Or the day thou eat it thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, Adam had thousands of trees, right? He had a whole world to him. But God said, even though there's freedom, there is limitation in freedom. Can we eat meat? Yes. But there's certain meat that we cannot eat. So God has limitations on freedom. That's crazy that that may sound. But we as a people need to respect God. He says, um, this is the whole duty of man, to fear God and keep his commandments. Not to sit here and tremble, but to respect who he is. Now, good to have a little fear, you know, because it, it does stop me from doing other things. Because if we have no fear to jump off a cliff, we'll do it, won't we? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of bugs. Very scared of bugs. And, not too proud to say that, but, you know, if there's a bug in the house, I'll think about killing it. Or, Beat me up the same. Brittany, I'll call my wife. Hey, there's a bug in here. Come kill me. Depending on how big it is, you know? I'm supposed to be the protector, but I call her. But bugs is also one of those things that I'm, I'm scared of. Now, I'm not scared of guns and knives, but if somebody comes to me with a fist full of bugs, they won that fight. <laughs> so, we have to put on, you know, this divine nature. We have to have some limits, you know? It's good to have fear sometimes. So, so as we read this man, he was in a in, in, in a in a lost state. How lost can you be when you have thousands of demons in you? But he came in contact with God. There's something about God that changes the person. Amen. Nobody nobody drags you or shake God into you. Well, Just when you experience him, it, it, it changes you. You know, sin. It makes you want to. It's like at times I say, Jeremy, I hate myself. And that's a strong word, hate. I hate that I sin. I hate that I cause God all this pain. That's not saying I really, really hate myself, but I hate the things that I do. Um, so I try my best not to disrespect God. You know, even in the simplest thing, even if I don't even know it's a sin, I just stay away from it. Even if I don't know, until I find out that, okay, this is okay. So, so this man, he wasn't in his right state of mind. And he came with contact with God, and God changed him. And the people, they saw the change. They saw that he was sitting there, and he was naked before, and now he was clothed. Just like Adam and Eve, he said, I hid myself because I was naked. And God said, put on this, these skins of coat, and cover your shame. His shame was covered. He was a new man. So, breaking the chains and howling and doing all these things, and the people feared him, 
but now they don't fear him no more. You see, they came and saw him. I'm pretty sure with him banging and, and, and running with all those chains, the people, when they saw him, they avoided him. But now that he's sitting there with Jesus, they saw Jesus and they saw him. This man was in the right state of mind. And we read in verse 4. Read verse 4. Because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and that the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broken into pieces, neither could any man tame him. No man could tame him. But I'm glad we serve an awesome God. Even though no man can tame him, God can do it. See, man try to put a restraint on their own sinful nature, but they can't do it. Only God can tame the sinful nature that we have. So there's no save, saving outside of Christ. We must remain inside of Christ to be saved and to be in our right state of mind. I always say, it is hard to sin with God on your mind. Is that when we push God out of our mind, that's when we indulge in our sins. You know, if I were to go and try to steal something, if God is on my mind, I would not do it because the spirit is, is, is fighting against the flesh. And sometimes we fight with, with the spirit, man. I know you just watch WWE. We be on the top rope, we suplexing, and, and we fighting with the spirit. And sometimes you just got to give up. Sometimes you gotta throw in the white towel and say, I give up. But with throwing in the white towel to God and saying you give up, you didn't lose, you win. Amen. Amen. All right. So God had changed this man. We serve a mighty God that can turn evil into good. Just like right. Joseph said to his brothers, you plotted against me to do evil, but God has turned it into good. And you see that um, Joseph saved his people, the Israelites, and the Egyptians also. God does everything through the Word. He creates through the Word. He sanctifies through the Word. He blesses by the Word. He forgives by the Word. And He resurrects by the Word. He saves the, word, the world by the Word. Everything that God does is by the Word. So we read here in John verse 1 and verse 14 and it said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth revelation 19 13 says and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god Amen. now who is the word of god everything that god does the father does is through jesus he saves us through jesus he created the world through Jesus. Amen. He redeemed us through Jesus. Mm -hmm. So through this man, so God wants to save us, so he has to be here. Jesus is me, he's our go-to to God. He said, no man goes to the Father but by me. So as we go through our daily lives, let us not forget that we cannot do anything without Jesus. But once again, the flesh profited nothing. So so when you come into contact with Jesus, just let him and give in. Surrender all to God, and he will change your nature, your very nature. He can't fix your nature. He has to totally transform it. That's why I said, if you're in Christ, you are a new creature. Right. The things I used to love, I hate now. Mm -hmm. And the things I used to hate, I love. I used to hate going to church. I used to hate reading the Bible. But now, I love it. I love going to church. I love meeting new people in the church and, and, and trying to save others. I see why back in the days when I'm like, why are these people all they talk? That's all they talk about. I see why they do it now. They don't have a new nature. And it pleases me to do God's will. Now, we have some Christians now. You know, I always say, everybody's a Christian. We have a Christian now. The Lord says, come unto me and I will give you rest. We have people that are restless in God. Why do I say that? Some people have a problem with keeping the Sabbath. Some Christians have a problem with keeping the Sabbath. It's like a burden to them. They hate to see when the Sabbath comes. But they do it because that's what they were told to do. So there's no love behind it. 
That's why you're resting. You can't sit and be at peace in the Sabbath. But when you have the love of God in you and you want to do His will, you love the Sabbath. You can't wait for it to come. The Sabbath is the only time that I get peace. Because in the world, I'm just, I hit the ground running. It's like I'm always chasing time. But Sabbath is God's time for me to relax and, you know, learn about God and share others with God. Sabbath is not only for us to sit in the church. It is lawful to do what on the Sabbath day? Good on the Sabbath day. So I see you I go to the um, nursing home. You know, that, that, that's very nice. But, you know, there's more we can do. My church brand new, we're going to come also. But there's more that we can do. We have to reach the community around us. Because we're in that community, right? The people around us need Christ. And we can't keep that light inside of us. As I said, um, you have the light of Christ. Are you going to hide it underneath the bush? No, you're going to let it shine. So God is calling us to have a divine nature just like him. Because if we don't have the divine nature just like him, there's not going to be any sin in heaven. So, when Jesus comes, let truth be found in me. Now, will truth last forever? Yes. Will error last forever? No. So, when he comes, let truth be found in me. So, I can last forever with Jesus. But if, error, if Jesus comes and error is inside of me, he has to get rid of error. And he got to get rid of me also. Because sin shall not rise again in the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 So we have something to look forward to. So, and going into the closing here, all things are made new. All things have passed. All things have passed away. We are made new with the blood of Christ. And we have, and when we have taken on that godly nature, let's look in 2 Corinthians 5.20. So verse 5 and 20. And first five, chapter five, verse twenty. Now that we are ambassadors for Christ, as though as through God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So to see that now that we have this new nation, now we can go out and preach to the world. We can't go to the world and still be of that old nature. Like I said, a drunkard can't help a drunkard. A sinner cannot help a sinner. Amen? So we have to be the ambassador of Christ. We represent Christ. And we must represent Christ totally. We can't go out there and and be something contrary to what Christ's character is. Because people don't look at you. They can't see Jesus. They only see you. So you have to be represent God in a godly manner. So in certain ways, I gotta walk. Now, this might be over overthinking things. Let's say if I was thirsty, I need the water. And you have the ABC store. I'm not talking about Christian store. I'm talking about the liquor store. And you have maybe a gas station five miles away. Me personally, I'm not telling you why else to do this. Me personally, I'm not going in our liquor store. I don't want nobody to get the wrong view of me. You talking about not, I just saw you go in the um, liquor store. You see what I'm saying? So if you never put ourselves in a situation where we have to defend ourselves in that kind of state. So always live life. God would want you to live, and so others can see the Christ in you. And like I said, they can't see Jesus. They can only see you. So we are ambassadors of Christ now that we have this new nature. So if we jump back to Mark 5, 18. Jump back to Mark 5, 18. It says, and when he was come unto the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed, prayed him that he might be with him. How did Jesus suffer him not, but say unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee, and, and has 
had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in the capitalists how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men marveled. And all men did marvel. You see, with this demon possessed man, he wanted to go with Christ. And that's fine. Yes, we all should follow Christ. But God said no. But Jesus said, God is Jesus. But Jesus said no. You go and tell others of me. Because he has the new nature now. He can rightfully, justly, and godly go out there and, and, and tell people of, of, of the goodness of God. The compassion that God has for us. You know, God came down here to die for us. And I make it a big effort to let people know that Jesus is the creator of the world. Jesus is the God of the Old Testament and the New Testament. Do you guys agree with that? And I make it a purpose to tell people that. And I show them in the Bible. You know, you don't want to tell them, you want to show also. Um, so a lot of people, they follow the pastor. They might not follow the Bible, but they follow the pastor. So I make sure I can show people verses. So I show people that God came and died for us, not a man. God took all his glory and took it off for us. He, was compassion. he had shown compassion upon us that he doesn't want us to get lost. In the parable of the lost sheep, you know, he said, I'm going to go find the sheep until, until God doesn't stop seeking after us. Even though he might have these other sheep, he said that one lost sheep I'm going to go get. Even though God had all these worlds that the devil um, failed in convincing to disobey God, he has all of them. We're just in this little corner here. God can just went, whoop, they gone. Nobody would know the difference. But the nature of God, that would go against the very nature of God. That is not loving to just um, do away with, with, with somebody who is lost. And that's what we can't do. Us as Christians, even though we might be preaching to somebody and they just have no hope in them, keep doing it. God didn't give up on us, so let us not give up on each other. Because just because we're in church don't mean that we're holy and high above it. We all need Jesus, right? Amen. I need Jesus. Just because I'm sitting up here, right. kind of elevated, looking down a little bit. I need Jesus too. He probably more than anybody else can. But I let him take control of my life. And let him mold me. Let him make me new. So those things that I used to love, I, don't, I can't do those things anymore. It, sin should not be pleasing to us. All right. It should get to the point of where if we sin, we just you know, feel right in our gut. Now this is going to be kind of Right here, this story. We, we, we have a, a rock star, right? We have a rock star. He's doing a concert. He's doing a concert. And he has a cup in his hand. This is not for the weak stomach. So he has a cup in his hand and he passes it around. And he tells anybody who gets the cup to spit in the cup. And when it comes back around to him, guess what he did? He drunk it. That makes it sick to your stomach, don't it? That's how sin should feel to us. We shouldn't feel comfortable with it. As soon as, sin, as soon as we sin, we should feel immediately sorry that we have sinned and you know, ask God for forgiveness. Because we have a new nature. Sin doesn't feel right in us. And, 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 and it shouldn't. So as you see how this demon-possessed man, he was in the right mind now. He's in the right nature. Now he can go. Now he can go and, and, and preach to the, the lost sheep or wh whoever it may be. He can bring Christ, he can bring others to Christ, because he can't do that in a fallen nature. Because if you go out there and try to preach Christ in a fallen nature, you might fall back into the world. Or you might just be doing it out of pride. You might try to bring somebody in here, or look, and look how many people I brought in here. That's when the self comes in. But if you got to do everything out of love, just like God, you, you, you don't want anybody to be lost. Anybody heard of ISIS? I'm pretty sure anybody's heard of ISIS. I don't want them to be lost. I want them to be saved. Now, they do a lot of bad things. Yeah, you got to go. I don't, I, don't, 
I don't like people that hurt innocent people for no reason. You know. God gave us um, freedom to make a choice. So let us make the choice of following God. Let him give us a new nature. In closing, so when the world sees us living a Christ-like, a Christ-like life, and somebody asks, why are they acting like that? Why are they not cursing? Why are they not lying? Why are they not cheating? Let somebody who knows who you are, and let your actions speak louder than words, let them say, that's because that's who they are. They have a divine nature now. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.